Think I can still take this coho back to Costco? Coolers are simple objects with a clear-cut job. They need to keep food and drinks cold by maintaining a colder temperature inside than it is outside. There are two main things the cooler needs to do in order to accomplish that job. Number one is block convection and keep warm air out. Number two is block conduction through the cooler itself. A good cooler does this by providing a good air seal that keeps warm air out and cold air in. And then it provides adequate insulation to slow the heat transfer through the cooler body. Most coolers are not designed to deal directly with the third form of heat transfer, radiation. Though some do have reflective liners like mylar, for example. Most coolers do well at reducing one or two forms of heat transfer, but I have yet to find an ice chest that earnestly combats all three. A veritable unicorn, that would be. Beyond its ability to keep things cold, a cooler may be further judged by its durability, portability, and extra features it provides. I've done plenty of that in other videos, so subscribe to the channel if you like to geek out on outdoor gear. But this video is about the difference between coolers that keep ice cold for a really long time and coolers that don't. This little angle cooler is barely considered a cooler. They even just call it a dry box, but it would likely keep your lunch cold for the day. And as you can see, there's a bit of a gasket here. This is a foam gasket. It's not gonna be the most durable or longest lasting, but it is going to provide somewhat of an air seal between the lid and the base. On that base, you also see a ridge here, and that gasket closes over the ridge. So that does make an effort to provide a pretty good air seal. This rotomolded cooler, on the other hand, has what I would expect from a high-end cooler. It has a rubber freezer-style gasket that goes around the entire perimeter of the lid. And when you shut it, that gasket closes tightly and securely on this little ridge here. The other thing that both of these coolers have in common is latches. These latches will help pull that lid down and make sure you have a nice secure air seal between the lid and the body of the cooler, even on this little guy. If you're looking at a soft cooler, you're not looking for the same rubber freezer style gasket that you see on a hard cooler. On this moderately priced soft cooler, then you actually just have no particular air seal. It's just plastic on plastic. Now this is somewhat effective, but this is a soft cooler that I can confirm holds ice longer based on a nice retention test I've done. And this is one of those ruggedized, rubberized zippers. Again, no specific gasket, but the lid nests well inside the body of the cooler and that zipper provides a nice tight seal. This is even watertight actually. But not all zippers are alike. This one is still somewhat rubberized, but I find it's not fully sealed. You can just feel the difference when you use it. This feels more like a zipper you'd find on a, an inexpensive sleeping bag or something. Look for a zipper like this. With the roll top, you don't have a zipper that could potentially fail on you, and you're able to roll it up and over itself multiple times, which when you clasp it will not only make an airtight seal, but also a watertight seal. I find this kind of closure to be very effective on soft coolers. You can usually inspect a cooler visually and be able to tell if it has a decent gasket, a decent air seal, or not. A gasket or a closure on a good cooler should prevent warm air from coming in the cooler, but it won't necessarily prevent all air from getting out of the cooler because many coolers are designed to be dry ice compatible, and to be so, they need to be able to release pressure outward. And not all coolers are designed to be watertight, and that's okay. Inspecting a cooler for insulation is a little bit trickier, so let's see if we can take these apart. Well, that was easier than I thought it was to cut this open. It's kind of interesting to see what's inside too. You get different layers. This is not as thick as it feels from the outside. We're gonna talk about this here in a minute. That's the main insulation. There's also a thinner layer of that foam up by the closure. I think this is a good example of an inexpensively made soft cooler. I didn't really like the design in the first place, so I didn't mind cutting it up. Come on now. Ha ah. Look at that. How about that? You know, this is good old styrofoam. <laughs> nice. Well, that was more fun than I've had in a little while with coolers, I must admit. That was pretty neat to cut them open. Seen it done, hadn't done it, now I have. So what can we learn from this? The first principle is simple. The thicker the insulation, the more likely it is to hold ice longer, and these two coolers make a good contrasting example. So here on this thicker, larger, roto-molded cooler, considered a more premium cooler, 
we see that the insulation is about two inches thick, including the wall, about two inches and a quarter there on the side. On the top, it's just over two inches as well, about two and an eighth. And on the bottom, more like one and five eighths. And that's pretty typical, actually. And when we look at this cheap $30 cooler, the insulation is about one inch thick. This cooler is likely a blow molded plastic cooler, different construction type than here. And of course, the roto molded just feels a lot more sturdy and has much thicker walls than this one here. But perhaps the biggest difference and the biggest reason that this cooler performs much better for ice retention compared to this one, which I've confirmed with a couple of tests now, is the lid. You're gonna maintain, I guess, a much cooler temperature inside this cooler because of that thick insulated lid compared to this one, which actually has no insulation at all. There are really five types of insulation used in ice chests. Let's look at these one by one. Air. Some of the cheapest coolers out there only use an air gap as insulation in either the lid or even the wall. This is indeed better than just wrapping your food in paper, but not by much. Think of it like a water bottle. You know those metal water bottles that only have the single wall of metal and they sit out in the sun and then they basically boil your water for you inside and you take a drink and it's super hot. However, my double walled mug here will keep my Coke cold all day with some ice in it thanks to the air gap between the two walls, which helps regulate for different temperatures on either side. Now, just about everybody has seen one of these basic styrofoam coolers. The term styrofoam is actually a trademark name brand of a type of extruded polystyrene, which is a type of insulation used in lots of things. We also see it a lot in packaging of appliances and heavy things we order on Amazon. And the, the benefits of polystyrene as insulation for a cooler are that it's lightweight and it has decent insulation properties. However, it's made up of 95% air and it can much more easily crack or break down even when inside your cooler which can create thermal bridges and reduce the cooling power of your cooler. Think of how a foam coffee cup breaks so easily. This is the same stuff. Even though we discovered polystyrene in this angled dry box or day cooler, it's not very common to find it anymore in coolers these days, except for these cheap disposable ones you get at the gas station. Open-celled polyurethane foam is very common in coolers these days, especially soft coolers. That's what we pulled out of this cobalt cooler when I cut it open. What you can easily observe is that these cells or bubble looking things inside the foam are pretty well open. There's a lot of air inside there as well. It has a soft squishy feel to it, but because it's flexible, it works well in a soft cooler, which is why we see most of them using it. And they have that soft plush feel to them. However, because they're not very water resistant, you need that soft cooler to be watertight if it's going to be a good one that will last a long time and not get moldy, which is why we value nice watertight waterproof covers like you find on these. While you may find open cell foam in high-end soft coolers, if you do find it in hard coolers, it may be a sign of cost cutting. Dense closed cell foam made of polyurethane also is what most high-end and high-quality coolers use, and sometimes even cheaper ones including that Coleman. And while not all closed cell foam insulation is the same, closed cell foam is injected into a cooler wet, and as it expands, it adheres to the internal sides, and it helps push out any voids and push out any air from the inside, which leaves you with a nice, dense, stiff, rigid insulation layer inside your cooler. And ideally, that's what you really want. Closed cell foam has a higher R value, around six per inch, whereas open cell foam has a lower R value of around 3.5 per inch. Closed cell foam makes a good moisture barrier, whereas open cell is a poor moisture barrier. Closed cell blocks air from coming through. Open cell only really does that if it's at least four inches thick, which you typically don't find in a cooler. Closed cell is very strong and rigid. Open cell is flexible and soft and squishy. Closed cell foam is dense and heavy. Open cell foam is not dense and it's very lightweight. Both typically use pressure to inject them into some kind of mold. However, closed cell foam is usually injected at a higher pressure than open cell. And lastly, closed cell foam can be expensive. Open cell foam can be rather cheap to make. Polyurethane foam is made by a chemical reaction. Two chemicals are mixed and when they come in contact, they react and harden very quickly. Closed cell foam is called that because more than 90% of its cells are closed one to another, like a prison. By contrast, more than 50% of cells share walls with each other in open cell foam, like an open concept co-working office space where millennials go to avoid getting any real work done. But there is a scale of how open or closed celled it can be, and adjustments can be made to make closed cell foam more or less dense. It's not all the same. So even if a $50 cooler has closed cell foam insulation, it may not be as robust as what you find in a $300 cooler. Despite all the nuances with foam and insulation quality, it may not even matter unless you really want your cooler to keep ice long for a very long time, which is why a cheap cooler with open cell foam or polystyrene may serve you just as well, depending on how you want to use it, such as for a day trip or an overnight campout. 
If you want a top performing hard cooler, seek one out that has a rubber freezer style gasket and at least two inches of dense closed cell foam insulation. It's like what mom used to say, it's what's on the inside that counts. If you want one of the best soft coolers, seek one out that has thick insulation with a water and airtight seal. Go watch one of these videos next, then gear up and get outside.